How's it going everybody? Welcome to my video. I'll be showing you guys how you can simulate a quad rotor helicopter using MATLAB and Simulink. This is meant to be a beginner's tutorial, so I hope you guys enjoy. So first off, we have a quad rotor and I'll be using the coordinate system X pointing to the right, Y pointing in front and Z pointing positive down. From this, we can then determine our propeller rotation directions. The opposite propellers spin clockwise and counterclockwise as shown here. This is very important because the moments need to balance out. The equations of motion can be broken down into linear motion and angular motion. And the relevant equations are obtained online for any 6 degree of freedom moving body. You have your Euler angle rates, your x, y and z accelerations as well as your moment of inertia and your body acceleration rates given by P, Q and R. When you implement in Simulink, I'll be using an aerospace block set because this feature has a lot of built-in tools which take care of the math and we can simply focus on what's important. Keep in mind that the joystick input and the forces from the propeller have been modeled before to save time. And I have videos on how to do this in more detail if you watch my previous videos and I'll also put a card so you can refer to that if need be. So here is my joystick model and this is explained in my previous video which I have a link below. Um, you can simply see that I have roll, pitch and yaw defined there as well as my force, my power setting and that's the fourth axis from this vector here. Here's a bunch of controller design which I did to control the joystick input because you don't want it to blow up, right? It has to be within a finite value and that is why you have a saturation block. The same goes for the pitch and the yaw as well. I have a similar methodology and this is mostly determined by experimentation. Each joystick will have its own parameters which you need to fine tune to match your desired output. So this is simply the block from a joystick and have my outputs over there. And that goes into my force model. Also my speed can be seen over there. So when I open the blocks, they can be outputted to this block over here, GR to GY. This, this is my force model over here. This simply is taking the equation of motion of force. It's simply KF times omega square for a propeller. And I'm assuming that KF equals one. So that is why you can see the block over there as omega squared. The omega represents each propeller itself and it all points in direction up because omega 1 to 4 represent the four propellers. This is simply me showing you the model here. It's quite simple to make. You simply use the sum block as seen there and you, then you can create the math model from that. And then you can also output the forces because they'll be fed into the moment block which I will create now. So let's create our moment block. Um, let's first drag in a bunch of inputs for my forces. F1 to F4. Then we can simply space them out a bit to make sure that they're legible and drag in a sum block since we need to add and subtract some values here. So first I'm just creating the architecture and then based on that I can then define my forces. So the forces have to be coupled since the moment is a function of these forces. So drag in a few addition blocks in there and create your desired addition and subtraction. F1 and F2 get added. So then you can move in, move the difference to the next block. So the equations can be seen over here. Mx equals F1 plus F4 minus F3 plus F2 times L. My equals F1 plus F2 minus F3 plus F4 multiplied by L. And Mz is simply a function of F1 to F4. I'm trying to create the, the above equations over there. So this you can create according to what you want to do. I'm just trying to save space. So I'm trying to combine equations into one because this is the best way to do it in Simulink. It's very efficient and looks cleaner. So the gain block, which I'm importing now is simply multiplied by L because you know L is the distance between the center of the axis to the propeller and moment is force times the distance. So L is 0 0.2 here and that value stays constant. So there you can see me doing the values there. So what I have now is MZ that's done and I'm dragging an output block which you can see over here. So dragging this output block and name it to Z moment and you will also have to do the same process for X and the Y moments. 
um, try and match the science and don't get don't make any mistakes here because um, if, if you make a mistake here it's going to create a, a huge problem after so just check your math as you go along and make sure that your signs are correct especially when dragging the blocks into the appropriate sum block right so don't confuse that and make sure that you also make it very neat so you can always get back to it if you need to the sign convention here is that the moment is by the right hand rule so I'm following that convention here also the Z moment is a reaction moment for a quad order because it's it's basically due to the propeller spinning it's not due to the length of the propeller to the axis so that's very important also you will have to multiply the gains block so just do that here and now I'm doing I think I'm doing the Y moment if I'm not mistaken so same idea same process and drag in the addition block and do it there and the rightmost block there that is for the X moment so basically I'm trying to save time I'm trying to make it a couple system so it'll look very neat so one thing about Simulink is that you have to name each block separately so that takes a little bit of time but it's always good to name your blocks because if a model is very big you will have conflicting names and this can cause problems especially with post-processing data using MATLAB or Simulink so when you name a block MATLAB keeps a track of the name and then you can always get back to it if need be after if you just name it what the default is like some or product or something then you want to know which block it refers to and this can cause problems if you're building a very complicated model So I'm almost done here, I'm just dragging my X moment and then finishing it up. Okay so I think we're done here, it looks good and we can select the whole thing and press create subsystem and delete all those inputs over there because you don't need it a second time. Okay so that's our moment block, it represents the moments which is being fed to the quad order because the propeller spin and that create a moment right so we need to now drag in the forces to make sure that it's coupled motion so simply drag in f1 to f4 as you can see here make sure that the arrow keys match up the correct output and input and this is a very good example of why you should label your blocks because then you can you don't need to open the model to see what the blocks are called you can simply use the labels on the outside to see which values are supposed to match and then input it accordingly Okay, so now going to aerospace block set and dragging equations of motion. So this block here, the six degree of freedom block is very powerful. It is a built-in feature in Simulink. It's used for a whole bunch of companies use it. It simply takes in forces and moments and automatically outputs everything you need, such as body velocities, you know, omegas, accelerations, position, and so on. And we'll be using this block because it's very, it saves a lot of time and we don't need to do the math ourselves. This is a very powerful feature which Simulink has invented and implemented and it does take a lot of effort to build this block so definitely a big thank you to the Simulink creators and ones who designed this block for both academic and commercial use. Okay so now I'm, I'm putting the moments into the MXYZ input there so that the moments are done now and we can open the we can move on so now open this block by double clicking on it and input the values you need. So here we have leave all the initial values to zero and only change the mass and the inertia. So the mass as given in the problem is a half a kg and the inertia tensor is simply IXX, IYY and ZZ and input that as shown here. It always goes from X, Y and Z so keep that in mind and leave the stuff on top as it is because we're using the SI system. Okay now we can move on from the block and we can create our force model so drag in a MATLAB function because we'll be calculating our rotation matrix manually the, re the reason why I'm doing this is because in the block in MATLAB the, the rotation matrix has a different sign notation and our axes are different right so we need to make sure that matches so type in UC and mass and now type in all the values there so U is simply phi theta and psi which are the Euler angles of yaw pitch and roll respectively 
mass is your function and C is the overall force generated by the propellers. This will be inputted from the force block which will be done later. So now use that equation there and first type in your R matrix. I was mentioning before that in the 6DUF block the R matrix is done a different way because they use a different notation. So but we'll be using our notation here because that is what the problem is and we'll be avoiding any discrepancies with signs so it's very important to put the correct notation there. So simply type in Rx, Ry and Rz. So these are simply matrices and you will have to find R which is a function of Rx, Ry and Rz. To find R you simply type in R equals Rz multiplied by Ry multiplied by Ix. And then you can type in forces equals mass times your 0, 0 and 9.81 which represents gravity or G minus your R times your um, 0, 0 and C. And the apostrophe there is simply a transpose of a matrix. And now return this function and change the y there to force f underscore earth because that variable is our forces and it's also a vector since we're using matrix multiplication here so we need that there so that's our matlab function which is inbuilt in simulink and we can drag in some values now so let's first do the um we can input this anywhere you want so i'm going to first put the mass as a constant value of 0.5 kg so simply drag in a constant block and type in the value there of 0.5. Next we can label it. Then we simply drag in the force in the C value because that's the overall force. Next we need to drag in the Euler angles and first we can connect the forces there. So F, X, Y and Z in the Euler angle blue block represents the body forces. So these forces are fed to the quad order from the the propellers and also our tilting motion so we need that there the angles of the opposite roll are ca calculated by simulink and we can input that into the u function so u itself is a vector and that is why i stated before that phi equals u of one theta equals u of two and psi is the next one so from this point here we can then we're, we're almost done pretty much but let's fix the matrix here so now we're, we're going to once again define our matrix our, ourselves and not use the DCM over there because we'll be defining our own notation of motion and drag in another function and call it rotation matrix connect the U to the phi theta and psi. So this function will be very almost identical to the MATLAB function before because in this case we are only calculating the rotation matrix which stays the same. So in this case we'll be naming it ROT which stands for rotation and now just copy and paste the values in there. So first we can define phi, theta and psi once again, which is the U function, which is, which is the Euler angles. And when that is done, we can simply copy and paste Rx, Ry and Rz into the second matrix. And when we're done that, we can simply define R. Um, I realized that I didn't define R in the previous function, so I'm, I'm gonna do that right now. But first let's define rotation equals R. So, so there um, I, I didn't define R, I made a little mistake, sorry about that, so I'm defining it right now. So that's our functions done. So that is it for this video pretty much. We're done the 60 video freedom model and we can simulate our function using Simulink animation feature. If you, if you don't know what Simulink animation is, I made two videos last year on how this works. And I have all the detailed explanations in there, so please watch that. I will also link it in the description below. And that's it for the video guys, thank you for watching. Our model is now done and when you simulate the whole thing, it'll look like what you saw before. So here I'm just testing it out. You can see the joystick moving and the quad being controlled. And you can see the X, Y and Z. Now Z is negative because it's pointing positive down. So negative means it's traveling upward, which we need. Thank you guys, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, bye bye.